Okay, if you're new to casting out demons, this video is for you. With all this talk of casting out demons and deliverance, people constantly ask, well, how do you do it? Isaiah, you say Jesus did it, the disciples did it, we should do it, so tell us how to do it. And that's the point of this video. It's gonna be short and concise. Share this with friends and family that are new. I'm gonna give you the basics of deliverance. We have tons of content on deliverance. If you wanna go more in depth, I'll put the playlist down below. But this is gonna be how to cast out demons for beginners. Okay, straight away, I want to answer the question, should all believers cast out demons? And the answer is yes. Every single one of us knows someone that's in need of deliverance. Jesus did it, the disciples did it, and then carrying on through the book of Acts, deliverance took place. It's very, very important we do it. If Jesus did it, it's good enough for me. John 14 says the same works he's done, we shall do, and even greater. So the idea that Jesus cast out demons everywhere he went, but now somehow we shouldn't, or somehow this has ceased, is completely non, not biblical. The whole thing of deliverance and casting out demons is not a spiritual gift. We see spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. We see Ephesians 4, 11, the fivefold ministry. Casting out demons is not a spiritual gift. It's not a fivefold ministry. It's part of our inheritance. It's part of what Jesus did so that now we can do it. So yes, absolutely. Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. So we cast out demons because they shall cast out demons. It's massively needed in the body of Christ. Now, this is going to be a quick video, concise, giving you these seven uh, steps to casting out demons. But before we do that, I want to give you this verse in Matthew 8, 16 to think about. It says something so interesting. It says, they brought him many possessed with demons and he cast out spirits with a word and he healed all that, that were sick. So he would fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah saying he himself took on our infirmities and bore our diseases. And this is a parallel of Isaiah 53, 4, which says he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We are all like sheep who have gone astray. Each one of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So right here, it shows that the casting out of demons, or we'll call it deliverance, which by the way, there's no deliverance ministry in scripture. It is literally the ministry of Jesus. But this deliverance ministry was part of the atoning work of the cross. Jesus died not just so we could be saved like salvation, but also he rescued us from suffering, from demonic spirits. We look at Mark 1, Jesus comes and cast out demons right at the start of his ministry. We look at Mark 139, he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. So this was something Jesus did everywhere. And as believers and disciples, why would we not do it? Like we hear every Sunday, be like Jesus, be like Jesus, except for when it comes to casting out demons. So we need to talk about this. We need to do this. It's massively important. If Jesus paid for this on the cross, why would I not want this? Why would I not want to be a part of this? Now, there's two types of deliverance I want to distinguish. There's when we do deliverance at the altar, and that's more, you know, it's we don't have the time, we're driving them out, we're praying, there's an anointing there. And then there's one-on-one -on -one sessions, which I prefer, and what I teach you tonight will apply to both. But I, I also wanna say there's no formula to deliverance. These are basic steps, but you may deviate, things may be different, no deliverance is the same. As you start casting out demons, you'll see that it's never the same. It's like a puzzle. You're trying to figure out the pieces and figure out where to go. So I prefer one-on-one -on -one deliverances, but we also do mass deliverance. We also do altar deliverance. If you're going to do a one-on-one -on -one deliverance session, I would say have two people minimum, five people maximum, one person leading the deliverance, one person just supporting and praying, one person maybe taking notes on what demons are manifesting or what's happening. So you can go back later and make sure those demons are gone. And then maybe one or two people praying quietly, asking for revelation, asking for words of knowledge. But Always make sure that if you're a male, you're doing deliverance with males. If you're female, you're doing it with females. And if you're a male doing deliverance with females, make sure there's other females. Never do a one-on-one -on -one deliverance with a male and female and vice versa. Make sure that there's several females or several males because you don't want the devil to take advantage and something crazy to happen. Okay, so let me give you, again, this is a beginner video. So we have all the scriptures, all the teaching down below in the playlist deliverance training where we go hours in, but we're not gonna spend hours in. The first step I want you to remember when it comes to casting out demons is make sure the person you're praying for wants to be free. There's no point in trying to cast out demons from someone that doesn't want it. We know according to Matthew 12, if a demon comes out and the person's house is empty, the demon just comes back seven times worse with more of its friends. So this is not a ministry for just the unbeliever that wants to keep serving the enemy. If you're doing deliverance on an unbeliever, if I'm doing deliverance on an unbeliever, I'm gonna give them a gospel presentation first and I'm gonna bring them the gospel. If they say, 
I don't want to serve God. I just want to be delivered. Then it's likely I'm not going to do the deliverance on them because I know that the demons are just going to come back worse. And also, they're going to have an extremely hard time casting out demons from a person that doesn't want it. The demons recognize your will. God recognizes your will. Free will is a real thing. And so the demons will often say, I don't have to leave. They want me here. So when you're casting out demons, make sure they want deliverance. Make sure they participate. They're just sitting there, just whatever. It's probably not going to be successful. They need to want it more than you want it. I tell people, if I'm going to do this deliverance on you, you got to want it more than me because this is a wrestling match. Ephesians 6 says we're wrestling against spirits, persons without bodies. So these are personalities that live inside of people. And when you're doing deliverance, you need to make sure you're doing it with a person that actually wants to be delivered. So that's number one. Number two is start by leading them through prayers of renouncing. Make sure they deal with unforgiveness and make sure they verbally tell the demons, I don't want you here. The demons are convinced they want them. They've opened the door to these demons and the demons think that the person wants them. So verbally have them renounce. And this is very simple. It's just you saying, I'm denying it. I no longer want it in my life. That's all renouncing is. There's nothing special about it. They're, the demons are there because you invited them, you accepted them, you came into agreement with them. And so by renouncing, you're just breaking that legal right they have to be there. You could repent instead of saying renounce if you're uncomfortable with that word, you can say I repent. Proverbs 28, 13 says, he who conceals his sin does not prosper, but he who confesses and renounces finds mercy. So there's a whole bunch of verses if you just Google scriptures on renouncing about renouncing darkness and renouncing evil, but it's just you saying, I don't want it anymore. I don't want this in my life. And so it breaks that legal right the demon has. It makes it easier for you to you be able to go in there and go to the deliverance. So it's something like, I renounce lust. I renounce perversion. I renounce anger. I renounce hate. I renounce addiction. I renounce witchcraft. Whatever it is they're going through, just go ahead and verbally renounce it. Break ties with it. Break up with it. And then you'll be able to go forward with the deliverance. Remember, there's power in your tongue. So sometimes the demon will try to stop them from saying certain things and that might be, okay, we're onto something. If the demon's trying to stop me, we're onto something. What you bind on earth, the Bible says, will be bound in heaven and what you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. And that's not talking about in the third heaven, that's talking about in the heavenlies, which is the spiritual realm. So there is power to bind and loose. We've been given authority over unclean spirits. If you look at Matthew 10, Luke 10, Mark 16, the disciples went out in Luke 10, 72 and said, we have authority in your name. Even the demons obey us in your name. So we do this in Jesus name, not in our name. Okay, so that's number two. Uh, again, deal with unforgiveness. You can look into like 2 Corinthians 2, 10, where it talks about the devil having an advantage over you if there's unforgiveness there. So make sure you deal with the unforgiveness and verbally tell the demons to leave. Okay, number three, confront the demon. This is key. Demons must be confronted. Keep calling them out. Keep putting pressure on them. If someone says I'm dealing with perversion or lust, I will literally say, I command the spirit of lust to be bound. I command you to come out in Jesus name. I bind you in Jesus name. You're confronting that demon. Demons need to be confronted. Some people say, well, I've never manifested or been through deliverance. Has anyone ever confronted a demon in you? You need to call them out by name. It's not enough to just say, I command every demon to come out call them out by name, put pressure on them. If you're wondering too what manifest means, it just means to make something come to light. It, may, it means to make something hidden known. It means to make something clear to the eye or the mind. So when we say a demon manifested, it's a demon that's been hiding or living in the person coming out and revealing itself, whether that's through speech, whether that's through screaming, growling, foaming at the mouth. These are things that happen in the Bible. Go look at Acts chapter eight. They were screaming as demons left them. Um, this is a biblical thing, but yes, the demon will manifest. There was a young boy in the Bible. He was foaming. He acted as though he was dead. A demon was throwing him in water and in fire. These are manifestations of demonic spirits. So call them out, put pressure on them. They don't want to be exposed. They want to hide. They've been hiding, but they've never met a believer like you that walks in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is all about the work that Jesus did. It's not about us. It's about what Jesus did. And this is what we do in his name, not our name. So he, Jesus is the focus and we're calling these things out in Jesus' name. Now you might say, what if a demon doesn't manifest? I would continue for a few minutes applying pressure, play some worship music, have a time of prayer, um, maybe come back another session, or maybe there's just not a demon there. But if the person knows there's a demon there, it often will take a few, few minutes to get it to manifest, to call it out. These demons are hiding, and sometimes they'll stop the, uh, it from happening because they don't want to leave. They don't want to be kicked out of their house. Demons call us their home. They literally live inside of people. And so oftentimes these demons don't want to leave. And so you need to apply pressure and you need to call that thing out. And can you, can you get delivered without manifesting? Yes, you can be delivered without manifesting. But if we look at scripture, oftentimes there was a manifestation 
So we want to make sure that we're calling those things out. Okay, number four is bind them in Jesus' name and command them to go into the abyss. We have the power to bind demons according to scripture. And so you're binding them in Jesus' name and you're commanding them to go to the abyss. We don't just want them coming out of one person, jumping in another person. We want to take them out of circulation. So the way we take them out of circulation is we send them to the abyss. In Luke 8.31, the demons beg Jesus, do not send us into the deep or the abyss. So if they don't want to go there, that's a good place to send them. The Bible's not very clear on where we should send demons, but again, if they don't want to go there, it might be a good place to send them. Romans chapter 10, verse 7 says the abyss is the place of the dead. Revelation 17 talks about the Antichrist rising out of the abyss. Revelation 20 says the abyss is where Satan will be bound for a thousand years. My belief is the abyss is the waiting place until they're judged because demons will be judged one day. Um, all the angels will be judged one day according to the Bible. So we send them to the abyss. One place Jesus allowed them to go into pigs, but it was a one-time thing. I wouldn't make a practice out of it. Oftentimes when demons leave people, they leave out of the mouth. Uh, if you're a house, the eyes are the windows, the mouth's the front door. Think of it that way. And Matthew 12 says we are spiritual houses. So we get them right out the front door, leave right, oftentimes right out of the mouth. Sometimes there's gagging, vomiting. Some of you are like, why are people throwing up and vomiting? There's nothing spiritual about throwing up. It's just when a demon's coming up through your esophagus, it's your gag reflex and it makes you feel like you want to vomit. So that's the whole throw up thing. There's nothing super spiritual about that. Um, command them to go into the abyss and put pressure on them. Don't expect it to take two minutes, three minutes. Sometimes it could take longer. And then step number five is if the demon doesn't leave, find out why it's not leaving. This could be a legal consent. This could be um, they're holding out on you. They're trying to wait longer than you and staying. This could be unforgiveness. This is where it's okay to talk to demons. The only time I'll engage in conversation, which is not even conversation, it's confrontation, but the only time I'll even talk or interrogate a demon is if it doesn't leave. And we see this in Mark 5, Jesus, when the demon didn't leave, uh, the Bible says he commanded the spirit, which the Greek verb was a repeated continuous action. Derek Prince, who was a literally a Greek scholar, says Jesus in the text was saying, come out of him, come out of him, come out of him. And when Jesus said it, the demon didn't leave. So imagine how stubborn this demon was. And so Jesus asked the demon its name. So if Jesus asked the demon its name, it's okay for us to ask the demon its name. Sometimes the demons could reveal other demons hiding, the number of demons that are there, why they won't leave. Maybe there's a curse that needs to be broken. Maybe there's a demonic, a cursed object that they're tied to, but there's no problem with asking the demon its name. Do not get on talking these long conversations with it. Just ask the demon its name, find out its structure, find out its strategy, find out its, uh, you know, its personality, and then you can go ahead and deal with it. But like a spirit of confusion will try to confuse you. A spirit of anger will make the person angry. So it is important to find the name to help with its function. Okay, so that's number five. And then once you've gotten the demon to tell you why, if it says, well, I have a legal right or they haven't forgiven, call the person back by name get them back, get them where they're not manifesting and then have them forgive and then have them deal with whatever it is they're going through, deal with that thing, whether it's they haven't renounced, whether it's they haven't forgiven, there's some unconfessed sin there, deal with that issue and continue to fight. Again, don't expect it to take 20 minutes or 30 minutes. It could take five minutes or it could take four hours. So you have people that have opened the door for their entire lives to demons and you think it's gonna happen instantly and quick. It does a disservice when we say it should only be a few minutes. Oftentimes this is a wrestling match. Okay, so after you've gotten, you think the demon out, number six is, number six, go back and check two to three more times. And demons are incredibly good at hiding. So if you're taking notes during the deliverance, which someone should be taking notes, you can go back through the spirits you think have come out and see if they're still there. You can ask the Holy Spirit for a word of knowledge. You can look for body language, look them in the eye. If you see something twitching in their eye or them moving weird or them manifesting or they feel something in their throat or in their chest tightening, the demon's probably still there. Um, look for any type of physical manifestations and then also pray, ask the Holy Spirit for a word of knowledge. Guys, throughout this entire process, you should be asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom. You should be asking him for words of knowledge. The Holy Spirit will oftentimes just tell you the name of the demon before the, the demon even tells you. So it's important to be working with the Holy Spirit in this but I would check and go back two to three more times, make sure everything's gone. And then if something resurfaces, which it often does at step six, then go back to step two, three, four, and go back and continue to bind the demon and continue to cast it out. And then most important step, step number seven. This is number seven. These are the seven steps to casting out demons for beginners. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill them after. Pray that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit and be protected. This is the most important part. Remember, Jesus said if the house is empty, that's the key word, empty. The Bible says it's in order, but the house is empty. So if it's empty, the demons will come back. 
We need to fill the house with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into that part of the soul and that part of the person's life that the demon has left. It's very important you do that. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill them. Anoint them with oil. And that is seven steps to casting out demons. This is a rough template. It may go completely different for you, but this is at least a start for you. This is at least basic teaching for you so that friends and family that are wanting to get into it, learning, this could be a video you just send them. Say, hey, this will give you seven steps. It's a 15 minute video. We have lots of extended. Maybe you watch this, you're like, well, I want more scripture. I want more in depth. We have hours and hours, like 50 something hours down below in the playlist. You can watch all the other videos. I'm gonna be releasing another video about what to do if a demon doesn't ca come out, if it's stubborn and you're stuck in deliverance. That'll probably be tomorrow night. We just had our movie come out this last Monday, Come Out In Jesus Name. It's been powerful what God is doing. Go to comeoutinjesusname.com. We'll be re-releasing the movie in theaters April 10th and April 11th. Also, if you need deliverance, we have a deliverance map at isaiasaldivar.com slash deliverance. isaiasaldivar.com slash deliverance. You can find a map with people doing deliverance right now all over the world. You can contact them on my map and you can go for deliverance. It's amazing what God is doing. Be excited about it. Expect resistance. Expect the religious people to rise up like they did with Jesus in Mark 1 and say, what type of new teaching is this? Guys, this is not a new teaching. This is not a new doctrine. This is all the way back from when Jesus did this and the disciples did it. It's a beautiful thing. There's no reason to hate on this ministry. The only people that hate on it are demons and religious people. And you don't want to be in those two groups. Go cast out demons in Jesus name. Mark 16, they shall cast out demons. God bless. <laughs>